how to use SAM.gov to win a $100,000 contract. So number one, you do not need a username and password to go into SAM. So I'm going to share my screen. So here in SAM, you're going to go to contract opportunities and you're going to go to advanced search. And you're going to notice all of the various search categories are here for the mouses. Because this website isn't as sophisticated as Google or YouTube, typing in keywords, this is something that my flagship company started out offering uh, well over 10 years ago is diversity training. It's, it's challenging to use keywords. You see the, the latest opportunities from 2017. That's not gonna cut it. So instead, what you're going to want to do is use product or service information. So you're going to need to enter names. Maybe you're like me, maybe you're not. I need a list of my names. Uh, I also use this to distribute to federal agencies and my team uses this today to share with federal agencies. So what's great, the NAICS are here and the descriptions here. So that way, all you have to do is literally cut and paste. You don't even need to go to the NAICS website. So we're gonna start off with the NAICS that's in yellow. And you may wonder why is this in yellow? It is in yellow because you're often asked to identify your primary NAICS code. And when my flagship company uh, entered the 8A program, that is what we were encouraged to choose. So let's take a look at what happened. So I literally just cut and pasted NAICS. And by doing that, you have well over 1,200 opportunities. And needless to say, that's a lot, <laughs> right? That is a lot of opportunities. So you wanna narrow it down. What I like to do is I'll look at, I like to go to notice type. I like to drill down by sources sought and pre-solicitation. For the way that my brain processes, I like easy. I can't have a ton of options, it's very overwhelming. For those of you that don't have that problem, feel free to choose as many options as you desire. You can put in all of your NAICS codes if you want. Just personally, I found it to be way too overwhelming and I, I just didn't find success. That's also very vital in this space is you have to know as a government contractor what works for you, what works best for you. So by choosing source of pre-solicitation, entering in the admin NAICS, and of course, making sure it's updated date. Because if not, you're going to get older opportunities. And these are important. I'll create a separate video discussing how to use the older information for business intelligence. But for the sake of today's video, we're digging into SAM.gov so you can win a $100,000 federal government contract. So you'll notice this is a request for information. It's, you have the due date here, sources sought, Homeland Security. Okay, that's great. You have plenty of time to respond. That's the first thing I look at. What is the deadline? Who is the agency? And a snippet of the title. I peruse these before I even click. And this is something that you should do at least daily if you can, because opportunities are posted literally 24 hours a day because government employees are located throughout the world and they're constantly looking for contractors. So let's take a look at one of these. I am going to click on Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Family. Why? Because we have a little bit of past performance in this area. So I like to hone in on those where at least there's some type of familiarity. The other thing that you're going to notice, and this is super common, is this website is constantly being updated. So you will always see some type of notice up here. Don't worry about it. There's always going to be something there. That's why it's very important to be patient, have your nakes, and realize it's not as sophisticated as YouTube and Google. It's okay, it's not that sophisticated, but you're gonna get through it. You're gonna win, you're gonna win contracts. So see the source of salt, see the deadline. Sometimes that information doesn't match. So we wanna make sure it matches, okay? And you may have noticed, oh wow, what is that? Is that a 
something with the screen. Why is there this random circle? She's trying to get my attention. No, 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 and more no. The thing about various government websites, sometimes you're going to have to need to use various browsers. So I purposely use Chrome. I love Chrome, it's my favorite browser. I use it all the time. However, comma, you have to use Firefox whenever there is an attachment. This symbolizes there's an attachment, you're gonna to have to get out of this page and go to Firefox. I know what many of you are thinking, why aren't you already in Firefox? It's just how I do things. It's just how I work. Again, you have to do what works best for you. This is how I operate. Okay, terrific. So we just copy, paste over here, voila, and you will see the attachments. And it's going to pull up a PDF and let's dig into this because if simply using SAM.gov yielded tons of money, everybody would be in government contracting. Like everyone, Jeff Bezos would have said, oh, forget it. Don't need to ship any more products. I'm a thousand percent just government contracting. And it is, it's not the case, you all. It's not the case. So I'm here to add that additional information so you can see there's more to it than searching, reviewing, and clicking. You also have to understand the code, what they really desire, and if it's for you. Very important. So kind of glean this. And the things that I look for as I review this is what are they looking for? What is their requirement? Am I able to respond in time? Is this something I'm interested in doing? And also am I gonna make a profit potentially doing this? Very, very important. So this is a lot of background information. I'm gonna skip that. What's important is going to what they're looking for, which is where I'm able to decipher that code check out the code here. So they are saying, we request that you address the following questions with a direction that respondents do not need to address every question and should focus on those where they have relevant expertise or experience. Also provide background, descriptions, your role, background on early childhood care, etc. So this is code for we understand that maybe not one vendor has everything that we're looking for, but we're open-minded. If perhaps your strong suit is number two and number four uh, further down here, that's great. And if you can show the past performance, you can demonstrate through maybe your credentials, hey, this is great. That's what they're saying to you. And also I want you to take note. There's a lot of questions. Literally it's from page two all of the way to page four. They are looking to you, to me, as a government contractor to answer as many of these questions that we can answer. And literally you'll cut, paste, answer the question, as well as they want background information on you. So you notice that here where they're asking, do you already provide this type of service? Are you on a contract vehicle? things of that nature. Which NAICS do you bet think best fit this? Which is great because you have your NAICS cheat sheet, right? You have that. And these NAICS are those that you should have in SAM if you're registered in SAM, or if you're partnering with someone, they should have these NAICS in their profile or be prepared. They're gonna have to update their profile and add the NAICS. So in sum, I wouldn't bid on this because we don't really have past performance in this arena, not looking to team with someone, but for perhaps someone viewing this, this is a perfect opportunity for you. And if so, go forward with it. Now, you may be thinking, okay, this is where it ends. That was great. Wow, that's kind of a bust. It's not a bust. Not at all, not at all. Why? Because now you have the contact information for two people that are connected to health and human services. And while this particular opportunity is around early child uh, or early care and education, you never know what else they may want to purchase. So it's a great opportunity to reach out 
to these two individuals and as to have a capability brief. This is a great opportunity. And more than likely, you can Google the contacts here and also obtain their phone numbers. You're gonna have to contact them often. I recommend at least once a week because they're really busy. And their full-time job is ensuring that opportunities are procured opposed to contacting, talking, emailing every single government contractor who reaches out to them. So let's go back. Okay, so let's take a look at this opportunity, Technical Administrative and Programmatic Support, TAPS. This is for um, USAID, Bureau for Resilience and Food Security. So I know just from this description alone that it may not be a good fit because from my understanding, USAID, they often want organizations who have a huge global presence. So I typically wouldn't even open this, but for the sake of the video, I want you to take a look. So you see it's a pre-solicitation. Again, you have contact information, people you can connect with. We're gonna move it over to Firefox. And something else I wanna add, Often in my early days, many people would say things in the government space like, oh, you can't, you can't be a government contractor and use a Mac computer. Oh, we use PCs. No, that's a myth. <laughs> many, many of my team members use Macs. I have multiple Mac computers. We never have issues. We never do. So I just want to put that out there. And also, believe it or not, some government agencies use Macs. So I just want to let you all know that. Okay, so you see the pre-solicitation, we already know that there's an attachment there because of the beautiful spinny thing. So we see here, they're looking for information. This is five years plus option years. Okay, this is exciting. So already I know this is well into six figures. I mean, this could be a million dollar opportunity. And they're saying they're, they're they've outlined what they're looking for. Okay, terrific. You can see that, and you can go deeper into these if you so desire. And once again, they have questions for you. Typically, a request for information, sources sought notice. They're asking you for feedback. No different than if you're looking for a new cell phone provider. You just don't go in and. You're like, hey, at and I need a plan. Okay, here's a plan. Yes, that's awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> Usually you have questions like, how much is it? How many phones? Do I need to change my phone number? Can I get a new phone? Can I add family, right? It's no different than when you're getting a new cell phone plan or you're looking to potentially change your cell phone plan. Very, very similar. So they're asking you to respond to all or part once again, they're saying to you, hey, look, we understand you may not be able to respond to every single one of these questions. Try, we'll work with it, which is awesome because that means that this agency is probably open to working with a small business who may not have or meet all the requirements. Who knows? But it's awesome that you have that opportunity. So you see the questions. And once again, when you respond, you literally cut and paste. Here's a question, here's my answer. Even if it has a typo, you don't have to fix it because they want it. They want easy. They want to see, okay, great. Questions for interested bidders, what you've responded to them. You have answers for each of these. Terrific. Okay. Also, this is very, very, very important. You must follow their instruction. They are asking that you provide a maximum of two pages size 12 font, standard one inch margins. Please send your responses in PDF. It should be structured in the following way. You must do this. I'm, if you don't want to, that's on you. <laughs> it's very important to follow their instruction because you have to put yourself in the mindset of the federal government. They are saying to you, do the best that you can, answer the questions that you can answer. At the same time, please respond 12 inch font, use this uh, set of margins, please put it in a PDF. And if you decide not to do that, then why would they wanna work with you? If, you? if you can't follow the instructions or a request for information, then what's gonna happen if they awarded you the work? No different again, you get a cell phone plan and they said to you, the entire year you get 
20% off. They told you that. You're like, this is amazing. I'm saving 20% at AT&T. Month number one, you don't see the savings. You're mad because you're already violating the contract. It's like a psychological contract. And this is like a literal contract, right? <laughs> like they're violating it. They don't want that. They want easy, easy, easy. So going back here, hey, if this is something that's of interest to you, you meet the requirement, I would definitely, definitely, definitely respond to this. So let's take a look at an RFP in this space. What's great about Sources Saw or Request for Information is you help to shape the opportunity that they may decide based on the number of responses that they receive, they're gonna make it a small business or a woman owned or service disabled, or they may just directly award it to you, who knows? But it's great because it gives you that opportunity to present yourself to the agency because they don't know you, they don't know me. How else would they get to know us unless we respond to these opportunities and follow their instruction? But when you follow the instruction, it also says to that agency, we can work with a small business because otherwise they're like, going back to the government mindset, and we're in another small business. They couldn't even put this in a 12 point font. Why can't we just work with IBM? Remember about 25% of government opportunities are set aside for small businesses. That's not a lot. And that goal isn't always met. So we want to put our best foot forward because it has an impact on all of us. And I know it can be annoying and I know it can be frustrating. And I know many of you are probably like, really? Yeah, really? Because it's the easiest way to weed you out. Okay. So we're all about winning though. Weeding in is what I call it. So let's take a look at the NAICS again. And we're going to go to solicitation and combined solicitation. We have the date, updated date. Whenever I choose solicitation or combined solicitation, typically the agency already has identified how they are procuring it. If it's full and open, if it's small business, if it's woman owned, if it's 8A. So therefore, I go under set aside and I'll choose the appropriate set asides. And I like short. So I don't typically choose every set aside that they have. And I wanna point out, because many people never talk about it, there is a buy Indian act. So if you qualify or want more information, please let me know in the comments because, hey, perhaps make a video on it. Okay, so I chose solicitation, combined synopsis solicitation, admin, total small business, because it's one of the most relatable set asides. Pretty much every single one of you watching, you're probably a small business. So if you're not, that's cool too. And maybe I can make a video for those of you who aren't. Just let me know. So you see updated date, we're ready to go. So we have NASA. I would pass on NASA. We've had some past performance with NASA. It's just, I, I personally wouldn't bid on that just based on, it's just not a good fit for us at this point in time. It's just not. Okay, so we have another one, health and human services. Medical expert services for the vaccine injury. I'm not really big on getting involved in things around vaccines because of the potential political fallout around it. If you're interested, by all means, click on it. So let's keep going. And these are other things to think about. Because once again, if this was just to just put the information, click, respond, bam, millions, retired at 27, woo, everyone would be doing it. What's important is you have to think of the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth order kind of sequences that follow if and when you win got to think about that. So let's take a look. Okay. EAP solicitation, space planning and admin support services. Okay. This is interesting. And you have Abigail Dale. One thing to know when an opportunity is in the sources, uh, the solicitation stage, you cannot just reach out to them only when it's RFI, source of saw, request for quote, market research. Hey, we want a one-on-one. -on -one. I just want to talk to you. That's great. 
what whenever we're talking about there's actually a solicitation you must follow the rules right you must follow the rules so let's take a look oh boy they're going to send us to another website when i see this i'm out i know you're probably like what <laughs> i know because I really like to narrow down and increase my likelihood of winning. And when I'm directed to the Fed Connect website, I'm skeptical. I don't wanna go that route. I may share this link so you all can check it out. I'm just always skeptical when they connect you to Fed Connect. It's just my thing, right? Again, it's knowing yourself. You must know yourself as an entrepreneur. So they have all these amazing attachments when it comes to the solicitation. We see the overview here. We know point of contacts in Ohio. And that's something that's also really important to get you to winning a $100,000 contract using SAM is you have to be well aware of what your win rate is, what you're comfortable with, what all these codes mean. And it says to me, if, if they're just reconnecting you to, to Fed Connect, hey, there may be somebody that they kind of have in mind. Who knows? Maybe I'm reading into things. I don't know. But let's take a look. So this one, they're looking to give five indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contracts. So that's really cool, right? And they're explaining to you how to submit your questions, how to submit the proposals, when they should be submitted, all of that. And then literally you just go through and open every single one of these attachments and you're going to respond accordingly. I'd like to point something out. Anytime that they ask you for past performance questionnaires, it's like a bonus tip, two things. One, you're going to need to fill out this information for whoever you give this to. Number two, in the Q&A, you need to ask the agency, if you have CPARs, that is, may you use CPARs in lieu of a past performance questionnaire? The reason for this is because the federal government is really busy. So while, you know, Maria with um, Department of Justice is your favorite client and you all are BFFs, she may be really busy and it may be difficult for her to actually get to this because often the person completing this has to send it to point of contact. And if they don't do that, and let's say three of these are required, it won't be considered for the opportunity. Sometimes your government clients may say, hey, just fill it out for me. I'll just sign it. It's just something that happens, just putting it out there. So when it comes to that opportunity, hey, it may be great for, you, for those of you out there. Personally, I wouldn't bid on it in a follow-up to this, I will focus in on a couple of opportunities I would actually bid on. But this is what makes this journey so amazing is look at the number of opportunities that came up, 63. And we're just in the second quarter of the government contracting cycle. So what I may deem as a diamond, you may deem as dust, and you're not interested and vice versa. But that's what's so great and so cool about being an entrepreneur, knowing yourself, charting your own course, and just being the best you. Because there's no reason you cannot win a $100,000 contract leveraging Sam. So one additional bonus that is, and I'll make sure it's shared again, is what you're going to want to do, if, especially if you don't log in, or even if you do sign in, because remember, this site it's not as sophisticated as Google and YouTube. That is, you're going to want to use a tracker where you literally, you can cut and paste, you can add the different information here on the sheet so that you're very well aware of your win rate, when things are due, who you uh, need to contact, perhaps put notes in here concerning those you have contacted, keeping in, cont uh, keeping in touch and keeping up to date anytime they release the answers to Q&A. Because another item that I'll, I'll add to this is, so let's quickly go back to this opportunity. So if you recall, they asked for 
questions. So what's going to happen is they're eventually going to release what's called the Q&A. The actual answers in the document that they release becomes part of the requirement. So if they say, no, you must use past performance questionnaires, you cannot substitute with CPARs, you must use past performance questionnaires. If they say, yes, we will extend the deadline. OK, great, they've extended the deadline. If they say, actually, the number of labor hours is 1,500, not 2,000, it's 1,500, not 2,000. So you have to be very mindful and go through every single one of the answers because it's now another requirement. You want to follow this process. Very important. And I know you're going to do it. You know they're going to do it. There's a reason you're here because you're a winner. That's why you're here. Thank you all for watching. At least part one, I will go more into this because this is one of the most important platforms that exist in this entire space of federal government contracting. So thank you all, all my amazing, beautiful GovCon winners for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment. Let me know what else would you like to hear about? Are there particular NAICs you want me to cover? I would like to cover the religion NAICs. It has nothing to do with me. It's about you. What do you all want from me? Again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Have a glorious, glorious, amazing day. And always remember, everything is possible.